All right, mathematicians. This uh, lesson is on operations with integers. So it's going to be lesson four. Um, mine, they're pages 12 and 13. Um, so I'm going to put that in here. My table of contents. So it's four operations with integers. Start at 12 and we'll see if we go further than 13. I don't think we will though. So when you're doing operations with integers, we're talking about multiple integers. So we're not doing two times three or six times negative uh, seven, right? We're doing a, a row of evaluating. So that's kind of called arithmetic when you do um, a lot of multiplying, adding, dividing, subtracting, when you do all of those together in one, it's called arithmetic. So there's a process that we go through, and you should have already learned this, but it's called the order of operations. Um, and so when we have a list of numbers um, with operations, there's a specific order that we do those in. And I'm going to draw you a diagram that I want you to put in your book that's going to help you understand those um, those orders of operations that we go through. So here are the order of operations. Um, you may have heard the term before, PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S. And each of those letters stand for what you're supposed to do in the order of the problem that you're given. So first thing we look for are parentheses, and those are gonna be grouping symbols. Um, that's another term for them. So they're really like this. Right, parentheses. And that's if you have anything to do in here. Right, so if you have like 2 plus 3 or 3 times 7, you have to do that first. And every time you perform one of these operations in these building blocks here, you're going to write a new line because you have a new kind of equation uh, or expression to evaluate. Next up is exponents. So exponents are when you have some number let's call it x and the exponent is a 2 so squared or you could say that you have a 3 and that's cubed you want to do 3 to the third first before you go on to your multiplication and your division so you want to do 3 times 3 times 3 because that's 3 to the third or x times x that's x squared. Now, there's a reason that I put m and d, which stands for multiplication and division, on the same line when you talk about building blocks. And that's because multiplication and division are performed left to right. So like I was saying, every time you have a new line, you're going to have um, something new to evaluate. And if you're just down to multiplication and division, you're performing those just like you read. You perform them left to right. And the same thing is true for addition and subtraction, which are the last two here. I perform those left to right. So as I start to break these down in my new line, right? If I start with something, I take care of all the parentheses, I shouldn't have any left. Then I take care of the exponents, I shouldn't have any left. Then I do my multiplication and division, I shouldn't have any left. In addition and subtraction, I shouldn't have any left. So this is typically, unless you have a really, really, really long problem, um, every row that you're taking or every row that you're performing one of these operations um, is going to be a new equation that we're going to write. And we're going to do some examples. And because I'm pretty sure you've seen this in sixth grade and maybe even earlier, we're going to do just some uh, small examples and then some problems for you to do on the left side and just show your teacher those to make sure that that you understand. All right, so we have our example problems here. We're going to evaluate first negative six times nine plus four. And so we're gonna look at our order of operations and check and see what we have and what we don't have. So we don't have any parentheses, so we don't have to worry about that one. Um, we don't have any exponents, so that's good. We do have multiplication, right? So, and we do have addition. All right, so first comes multiplication, and I do that left to right. So if I had some multiplication over here, which I don't in this case, but if I did, I would start with this one. 
So first we're going to do negative six times nine. So negative six times nine, that is going to give me negative 54. And then I keep writing what, I've, what I have left. So plus four. All right, so I had some multiplication here. And then I don't have any division left, but I do have some addition, All right? So negative 54 plus four. So remember we're adding here. And when we add and we have different, um, we have different signs, right? We take the difference and then we use the sign of the bigger number. So 54 and four, the difference in those is going to be 50 because 54 minus four is 50. And then we take the sign of the bigger number, which is negative. So the answer to this one is going to be negative 50. For example two, I changed it just a little bit. I put a square up here because I noticed I didn't do one that had exponents. Um, so let's see what we have. We do have parentheses in this one. It's a four, but there's nothing to do inside of the parentheses, and that's really what the P stands for. If this was 4 plus 7, I'd have to do that first. If you look down to example 3, you can see that I have negative 3 minus 3. I would have to do that first. But even though there are grouping symbols, they're just grouped around one number, not an operation. Right? So we wouldn't really have to worry about doing those first. So even though we see parentheses, we don't actually have an operation to do with them, so we skip it and we go to exponents. So the exponent we, hear, we have here is a two. So we have to do four to the second first. So four to the second or four squared would be four times four, and that would leave us with 16. And so now I have 16 minus two times three plus 16. And now let's see, do I have any more exponents? No, I don't. So I do have multiplication right here. So I want to do the 2 times 3 first. So this would stay the same, 16. And this is minus 2 times 3, which is going to be 6. So minus six. You could also think of this as negative two times three, which would give you negative six. And think of it that way. And then we're doing plus 16 here. The final step, we have addition and subtraction because we don't have any division. Okay, so we're going to do these uh, two at a time. So first we have subtraction. And it doesn't matter that I wrote this as A and S, right? I'm just doing it left to right. So the first thing I'm going to do is 16 minus 6. And 16 minus 6 would give me 10. Plus 16. And now I still have a more addition to do. So 10 plus 16 is finally 26. So the answer for that one is 26. So my last problem is a long one. You see, I have a lot of operations there. Um, so we're gonna take it step by step. The first one I have is parentheses. So I have negative three minus three, so I'm gonna do that first. So negative three minus three, if I think of that as I have negative three integer chips and negative three integer chips, then I have negative six altogether. And I'm gonna keep that in parentheses because it's a negative number. Um, and then I rewrite what I have left over. So here I've got negative eight still. plus 72 divided by now negative 6 divided by 3 
plus 12. And so let's see what I still have. Now remember, technically I still have parentheses, but I don't have any operations to do inside the parentheses. They're more just there. So I don't have to worry about that step anymore. And I go to exponents. And I don't have any exponents because there's nothing square. There's no little number on the top right that would show an exponent. So I can move on to the next step, which is multiplication and division. So again, with this, I'm working left to right. This is addition, so I don't worry about that. So I can actually even leave this as negative 8 plus, if I wanted to. But now, as I work left to right, I do have a division problem here. We have 72 divided by negative 6. So 72 divided by 6 is 12. And because this is a negative 6, they have different signs. When you go back to your multiplication rules, this really becomes negative 12. And so I had to do this division. And I'm going to rewrite what I have left. So divided by 3 plus 12. And as I keep looking, I see that I do have another division left, negative 12 divided by 3. So again, I'm not doing anything with the negative 8, so I can rewrite it. But here I do have some more division. So negative 12 divided by 3. Well, 12 divided by 3 is 4. And because we have two different signs, a negative and a positive, it becomes negative 4. And then we still have that plus 12 at the end. And so now let's see what we're left with. We don't have any multiplication or division left, so we're going to go right into addition and subtraction. So right away I see I have addition. I'm adding two negatives together. Remember, I go left to right, so I'm going to start with negative 8 plus negative 4. So negative 8 plus negative 4, if I think about integer chips, or just how many negatives I have. I have 8 negatives, and I have 4 negatives. When I combine them, I have 12 negatives. So I have negative 12. And then what I have left over is over plus 12. And again, I have more addition. So negative 12 plus 12, if I think about these, I have 12 negatives and 12 positives. So this, if you remember, goes back to one of the very first lessons we did when we talked about what was called the additive inverse. So remember, the additive inverse is when you have negative 3 and positive 3, or positive 5 and negative 5. Those numbers, those additive inverses, they're called zero pairs. And that's because when you add them together, you get zero. Right? So those are called zero pairs. So right here, if I go back to my problem, I have negative 12 and a positive 12. So that's going to give me zero as my answer. And then we're done. So we had this whole problem and it all, after all this work, came out to zero. So I'm going to give you some problems on the left side for you to do. And then you have about 15 practice problems for you, uh, for you to do that are start with some simpler ones like this and then they move on to um, some more advanced problems. So your practice problems on the left side of your book, you're going to evaluate 14 plus 8 minus 9 times 6. And then for number two, this is how you would read this out when you have grouping symbols or parentheses. You would say um, the quantity negative 25 minus 5, then divided by 6 minus 21. So when you say the quantity of, it tells the reader or whoever you're speaking to that what comes next is in parentheses. 
So I'll do the same thing for your problem on number three. This is negative 14 minus the quantity of three plus three times two. So after you're done with those three problems, showing all your work just as I did on the right side, you're going to show your teacher to prove that you're ready to move on to the practice problems in the textbook. Thank you.